Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and a blessed Wednesday to you. We are so delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today, our guests are Dr. Ed and Jen Hogan. They are Catholic educators and marriage retreat leaders, and they are from the Archdiocese of St. Louis. And we are delighted to have them with us today. And they're gonna tell us the beauty of marriage, the beauty of the Trinity at work in their marriage. And um, they're both educated, gifted, <laughs> and how God is using them um, mightily yeah in formation of men and holy women of God. And Ed's the academic dean and associate professor of systematic theology at Kenrick Glennon Seminary. And Jen is also a spiritual director. And above all else, they're married, they love each other, 30 years, six children. Mm -hmm. And I love when they wrote us earlier and just said, you know, we're married long enough to know what we didn't know at the beginning of the time and they're open to learning. So it's, it's gonna be wonderful to, to be with them. And like you said, Joy, they do a lot of reflection on the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity in marriage, what does that mean? And I said to them earlier, a lot of people say, I don't even know how to really share that much about the Trinity. How does that relate to marriage? They're gonna unpack that for mm. us because it is the most beautiful, beautiful thing um, that marriage is deeply rooted in the Holy Trinity. They also share about, a lot about discernment. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of the work that uh, Dr. Ed does, hel helping people to discern their vocation. So he's working right. with priests and their priestly vocation and what mm -hmm. that means. and uh, and. Then Jen's working with spiritual direction and discernment in that. So, and they, they do a lot with helping your children to learn how to discern. Mm -hmm. That's hard to believe, right? How do we help our kids to learn how to discern? It's like just hard enough to keep them walking or something. But uh, that can be done. They're gonna share with us about that. And the relationship between priestly formation and helping those priests understand the home and the mm -hmm. family and marriage because marriage and family is the seabed for vocations mm -hmm. and family to understand discerning the possibility of a child's call to the religious life or whatever that might be. So, you know, it's gonna be great just to speak to people that are so experienced in these fields and doing so much. They've been called for such a time as this. And boy, does the culture need them and does the church need them. So, and they're yeah. humble, they're holy people, and we're excited to have them. And you're gonna be blessed as you watch today. So thanks for being part of the show. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. We're seeking to renew the church and build a new culture of life, mm. marriage, and the family. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guests are Dr. Ed and Jen Hogan. Ed is the academic dean at Kenrick Glennon Seminary in St. Louis. And Jen is a spiritual director. And what I loved about the both of them is how they shared so openly what they didn't know about marriage. Because, you know, we all go into marriage as if, oh, well, I, mean, I love him and I love her. As if we think in the beginning that's going to get us through the distance. And usually about three months into the marriage, that is so not true, is it, right? They're 30 and, years in now, so they're doing pretty yeah, well. Yeah, so you kind of go, we knew nothing, yeah. right? And that's the beauty of the journey, is we realize who we are and who we're not and how much we need God in our marriage to make us, mm -hmm. to become the people that he's designed us to be. Well, tell our family a little bit about your beautiful selves and how God is using you in St. Louis. Well, I always say first I'm a husband, mm -hmm. next I'm a father, and third I'm a teacher. Yes. Amen. Uh, and so Jen and I have been married for 30 years, as you said, and, and for like the first 20 years, I was incredibly dumb. <laughs> it's a, a miracle that we survived. Glad we have you on the show years. now. That's right. <laughs> that's right. We have six children, and, and if you think about it, six is more than a handful, and that's uh -huh. however many children you have, that's what they are, more than a handful. Mm -hmm. And then I'm teaching at the seminary, and I'm also privileged to be on the administrative team there. We have an amazing team of people at the seminary. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about uh, 
Kenrick Glennon Seminary. Yes. And, and what you all are doing there, the whole team there. How yeah, they so work we're together. a regional seminary and we serve about 20 different dioceses wow. throughout the Midwest and yeah. Great Plains. And we really have a sense as academic dean, when I walk through the building, I see every guy. And when I see him, I think home diocese, sending bishop, vocation director, characteristics of the home diocese, GPA. Mm -hmm. And I need to know them in that yeah. order, right? Because yeah. we, we're training them to send them back to different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen, tell us a little bit more about yourself and spiritual direction. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a spiritual guidance. Yeah, um, I've been blessed to be able to stay home with our six children who are now between 25 and 13. Incredible. So pray for us, we have many teenagers mm -hmm. in the house mm -hmm. right yes. now. Um, but um, along the way, I've had the privilege of being formed as a spiritual director. Um, so I get to walk alongside, at this point in my life, it's mostly um, individual lay women, mm -hmm. other moms. Mm -hmm. um, I meet with them once a month. And uh, it's almost like having a personal trainer mm -hmm. for your prayer life. Yeah. Someone who's going to um, hold you accountable for putting in the time and the work on that prayer relationship with God. And then unpacking and articulating what's happening. What are the graces I'm receiving from the Lord as I pray and walk through my life? And where do I... Or do I need the Lord even more? Mm -hmm. Spiritual directors are so important because sometimes we look to our clergy mm -hmm. to do that and they don't have a minute in their schedule yes. to tend to us. <clears throat> yeah. And so thank God that you're there and you have the ability and the talent and the time to mold yeah. and shape and mentor other women yeah. and to hold them accountable because it's kind of like last week when we met or last mm -hmm. month, you said you were going to do this. And I, I used to do that too. And I'd say, did you tell your husband in this month's time ah. that you love him? Mm. Oh, I haven't said that yet. I'm, you know, <laughs> let's work on that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So the, both of you do marital retreats. Mm -hmm. Tell our family what you've learned about your own selves and family mm -hmm. life doing marriage retreats. I would say one of the key things for us is the insight of how the Trinity is at work mm -hmm. in marriage. And, and so often for many people, the Trinity is just an abstract concept. Mm -hmm. and we're happy to hold that on some yeah. level of our mind, but we don't know what it looks like in our life. And what we realized early on was all of creation is held in being by the Trinity. So the Trinity creates a space mm -hmm. for the world to exist and then for each creature to be itself. Mm -hmm. And we realized that in marriage, we can create that kind of space for one another yeah. to be ourselves. And then we mm -hmm. open up a space and we discovered this early when we were just dating and we served on a retreat together. And we realized that it's not when we stood side by side looking at each other, but when we stood side by side serving the world, mm. it created a space for other people to encounter the Lord. Mm. And we realized, oh, that's what we want to do. And so we create that space for children. We create that space for friends. We create that space for one another mm. to really come alive. And that's based on the Trinity. And, and when you think about it and push it back, the Father allows the Son to be Himself. Mm -hmm. And the Father and the Son allow the Spirit to be the Spirit, so their identities are in relation. So we realize that, and we just invite couples into that mm -hmm. in retreat. Mm -hmm. And then as we lived into it, as you said, for, for the first three months, marriage is one kind of thing, and mm -hmm. then it changes, mm -hmm. right? And we go into marriage thinking, well, see, we're called to marriage because our strengths are a gift to one another. And that's true. Mm -hmm. and, and, and after a few years, that wears out. It does. And, and <laughs> what you see more and more is your weaknesses, mm -hmm. right? Your weaknesses start to kind of grind on you a little bit. But here's the deal. God also designed your weaknesses as a gift to one another. Mm -hmm. So that very place where your spouse's weakness pushes your buttons yeah. is the place where God is asking you to grow in holiness. Mm -hmm. And so when we pivot on the weaknesses in a different way, it opens up a new space in our prayer life. <laughs> it opens up a new space in our relationship. It opens up a new space for receiving the weaknesses of our children mm -hmm. and our friends and the whole world. Mm -hmm. So we talk about that on retreat. Yeah, well, that, that's an amazing concept because I, I wonder how many people are really talking about that because, you know, it, as in marriage, um, we, you have to find yourself, you find out who you are and who you're not. And the beauty of, in early years, when we would be teaching too, I would thought I had to prepare like Jim mm. or Jim. And I was like, I'm not you. 
and I'm yeah. not going to be you because yeah. you're a little bit too much for me. And that's not how I prepare. <laughs> but that's making you better. <laughs> yeah. And so, but and I, you would hope that My Jim weakness. would say, mm, maybe I should prepare a little bit more like Joy because we, we're just different that's human true. beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the beauty to allow each other to be and do that as opposed mm -hmm. to competing with each other yeah. and there's no yeah. competition it's I'm gonna embrace the beauty of who you are yes. and how God is using you and your gifts and talents Jen, mm -hmm. speak speak into what Ed was just sharing that yeah. whole opening I'd like to speak there was so much in that like it's incredible but yeah. so your thoughts on that or other aspects mm -hmm. of that as you're leading retreats as you're working with women giving spiritual direction and so on what he just said how does that work its way out with others Mm -hmm. I, well, it needs to happen first between the husband and wife that, you know, Ed concluded by talking about how um, ultimately we need to allow our own weaknesses yeah. to be a gift to the other, but we can't do that unless um, the other has created a space where, where you feel safe mm -hmm. and you can be vulnerable and you can allow your weaknesses yeah. to be shown. Yeah. I can even see that in the two of you that you, you, um, you each know that the other um, accepts you unconditionally right. and that you can let yeah. let down and yeah. and let yourself show those parts right. where you struggle right. or you know yeah. um, that's important yeah. and joy did teach me that that being um, when we were first married I could be very argumentative I was mm -hmm. raised that way so we would have to make our case in our home and you would debate and you would do whatever and that was like normal especially in an Italian household sure. Well, you know, I got married, and then the, we were seeing things a little bit differently, you know, this and that. So I went into my, you know, argument, not, you know, like a case. Yeah. And then, you know, Joy was kind of listening, and she would say a few things back, and I was making my case, and she goes, are you trying to win? Like, are you trying to win this? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always trying to win my case. She goes, well, I'm not. She says, I just want to know what's right for the both of us and for our marriage and what Christ wants. I was like, oh boy, well that's no, there's no reason. But that's what you speak with that space. Yeah. So I had to understand, this is not, I mean, you, you can make your case, so to speak, but maybe it was a little bit argumentative. And she was just saying like, you know, this is about Christ. This is about what's gonna make our marriage a success. Mm -hmm. That was a turn, pivotal in my life. And that was that space. Yes. I had to think differently. I couldn't bring that family thing into this one. This is different, she's different. Right. She's not Italian, but she's a lot like an Italian. She could be in there. I'm a German-Irish girl, and that gets no complicated kidding. too. What does Christ say? What does the yeah. church say mm -hmm. about what we're supposed to be doing in this area, that area, and that area? Because that's all I want to know. So that's she good. created a space where you didn't have to win, and she wasn't tearing you down. She was giving you the confidence yeah. and the, the affirmation that I love that about you, but there's more to you. You can... Yeah. Um, you can yeah. move beyond winning the argument, yeah. and you can be right, and sometimes there's even more that you need to know. Yeah, well, that, that even the way you're right. saying that is very peaceful, very there, because a guy could respond, not me, but somebody yeah. else, cause, yeah. you know, don't mother me. Mm. Don't, 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 you know, patronize me, patronize, patronize yeah. me. Yeah. You know, but she's not doing that at all, but you could think yeah. that way. You, yeah. you need to be transformed and say, oh, this is really something different here. I mean, we're just caring about what the Trinity wants for mm -hmm. us here. You know, when yeah. you started out talking, you said something, I can't put it in the words. But it is difficult, you know, to understand the Trinity, who can plummet the depths of the Trinity. But you encountered the Trinity, and like you said, you said the Trinity uh, is, is what's created everything, it's holding it all together, every person, everything, this. And so, of course, we want that. That's so powerful to think he's in me somehow, some way, and I'm in him the one who made and is holding everything. I mean, if we believe that, then you know, everything's okay, like everything's possible. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's very profound. So, so theologically, that's a big help. It helped me to understand the Trinity the moment you said it. Because we're always trying to figure out you know, how, but yeah, you gotta come into it. He's gotta come into you. You know a little bit about his character, you explain that. Mm -hmm. I want it in my marriage, I want it with my kids. Yeah. So speak to us a little bit more about your children you know, understanding this. I mean, so, you know, you have that faith, and they're all different. This whole thing of, of knowing the Trinity, knowing who we are, individuals in community, we're all human beings, we're all equal, but we're different. Yeah, yeah. How do we get this across to our family? What do we do? Yeah. So it's important to understand, I, I think it's important to understand theologically, right, that the Trinity, the, the persons are always united, but always distinct. Right. And therefore, even the Catechism says, in their actions, they're always working together but each according to their unique personal property. 
And when you think about the prayer of absolution, each of the persons is there doing something distinct. And when you think about the liturgy, each of the persons is there and doing something distinct. And then you think about, well, that should be true in my prayer life too. But that's a big blank for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that is. Well, okay, then lean into that and start to notice how is the Father present to you? How is the Son present yeah. to you? How is the Holy Spirit present to you? Because it's easy to say, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit and not be talking to anyone. Mm -hmm. But if you just pause there with that prayer, yeah. glory be to you, God the Father. Glory be to you, Jesus the Son. Glory be to you, God the Holy Spirit. Now I'm talking to someone and I may not know the distinction, but I'm leaning into it. Mm -hmm. I'm opening up my heart for each of those persons to become present to me yes. in a unique way. And if I just begin to talk to, you know, if you, if you begin a child on another language when they're two, they pick it up more easily. Mm -hmm. And if you use the Suzuki method of learning the violin, they pick it up more easily because they start when they're young. When you start their kids, your kids when they're young, they start to just notice these distinctions because they're written into our experience, right? Mm -hmm. And if you haven't started, right, when they were young, it's never too late mm -hmm. to start, mm -hmm. right? Because God as Father, Son, and Spirit is constantly becoming present to us. And what our kids learn in the midst of that is we're not trying to win. We're trying to keep the relationship in the right spot, mm. right? I can be right about an issue, but wrong in how I carry that into relationship. Mm -hmm. And my kids are raised in the context of relationships matter mm -hmm. because relationships reflect the Trinity. And if I pay attention to the relations, all the stuff that needs to get done gets done, but it gets done the right way right. with good fruit mm -hmm. versus just plowing through it and running over people to get it done. So those are some of the things that we've taught our kids mm -hmm. because we believe that relationships are core, because we believe that the Trinity is at the heart of everything. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, and that's true. My deal in my family is I want to have fun. And so I want to have fun in the relationship with you because relationships are important. So if we have a work detail that we have to get through together as a family, the point is let's give God our best, let's do our best so that we can get back into relationship. Mm. I mean, you know, those were Saturday chores. It was kind of like we got to do this, but the goal is to get them done so then we can play, mm -hmm. you know. And, but you have to form them in that. You have to form marriages in that. You mm -hmm. have to form holy men in that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, tell time, us about the seminary. Going. we got like three minutes left in this show. Mm -hmm. uh, but speak to us about mm -hmm. seminary formation, what's yeah. going on at this time, how it relates to, you know, former times, what's happening, any encouragement with the guys you're seeing, what's going on? Sure, there's so much to be said there. I know. Uh, it's, here's some things to be encouraged about. One is some people are discouraged about numbers. But let me just say the quality of men is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And you Thank see God. this at, at winter time, the darkest time comes and the light starts to grow, but the heat doesn't come until three months later. Well, the light is growing because of the quality of these guys. Wow. Now I gotta tell you too, that guys are coming from intact families and broken families, yeah. right? But that it comes from an intact or a broken family is just the starting point. A guy coming from a broken family then experiences all kind of healing and then he can bring that healing out as well. And this is one of the other things that's encouraging is the process of formation that guys go through. They're not just receiving a theological education, they're receiving formation, it's human formation, it's spiritual formation, it's intellectual formation, it's pastoral formation, and it's all focused on how they're gonna help people grow in their relationship with the Lord. So we've seen uh, amazing healings happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've seen guys carry that out into parishes. That's tremendously encouraging because then everyone who comes in with some kind of broken situation is received by that priest yeah. who knows exactly what it's like to be there, mm -hmm. who knows exactly what it's like to have stuff and let God into your stuff and move with God through your stuff. So it's not just learning doctrines in your head. Yeah. Right. It's learning why that matters in your daily life and how to lead people to encounter the Lord there. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing that's happening. We just had about a minute and a half before break. Jen, can you speak to that as well, that kind of formation and even how it relates in the home? We just have a minute. Anything you want to say about that? Mm -hmm. um, it's married very closely in how we raise children, right? That um, 
no matter what they're going through, there's this opportunity for them to know the Lord in in the mess of life, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And that it's all rooted for both a seminarian and as in marriage and for our children. And what's your identity in the Lord? How is God looking at you? How is he accompanying you in whatever it is you're going through? And uh, yeah, he's always right there with you. Mm -hmm. And so to know more and more deeply who I am before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then all the other relationships in our lives flow out of that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for opening up these areas of marriage, the family. Uh, more, we'll speak more about discernment there, intimacy mm -hmm. with the Lord, as well as you know, rules and regulations and, and guidelines. So we look forward to sharing more further tomorrow. Um, so we'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back while well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And now we have Father John Paul with us. Father, welcome. We're so glad to have you back. It's Tell our here. family what you thought about the beautiful things that Ed and Jen were sharing with us. It's a lot to think about. Um, just, um, just the interior life of, of the Holy Trinity um, and just the Holy Trinity dwelling within each one of us, dwelling mm -hmm. within our souls, uh, dwelling within, within the context of uh, the marital union uh, between husband and wife and and also how that plays into our uh, relationships with one mm -hmm. another uh, as husband and wife uh, children come along too yeah um, I guess just one thing I was thinking about one phrase is uh, vulnerability begets vulnerability mm -hmm. and when we're vulnerable with one another uh, and create that space uh, that sacred space and where, where we can allow God to come in uh, and also invite other people in. Mm. Um, people begin to open up. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that in my own life personally, um, opening up to other people. Um, yeah. When you start to open up to people, then other people around you start to open yeah, up. Right. I know you see that mm -hmm. every day at Her mm -hmm. Choice, mm -hmm. you know, just sharing, you know, within the context of sharing. And think about what that does in marriage. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of an example of a good person that I know, a very good close friend. He said within his marriage, for the first five years of marriage, his wife was very, um, not pushy, but loved to, loved a good argument. Mm -hmm. He didn't. So whenever they would get into this, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, argument, you know, uh, discussion, he would walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For five years, he, and, and he said, I knew that I was wrong. He finally admitted it, mm -hmm. yeah. and he had to grow through that weakness, and now he's e an even better husband, an even better father, because he faced it. He allowed you know, his weakness be to become a pivot point, a, a strong point. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? mm -hmm. Well, you shall know the truth, and the yeah. truth will set you free. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. that's very helpful to know that that helps you to be more vulnerable if you really believe that there is a truth, mm -hmm. and that, that you know, God could be made perfect in our weaknesses kind of thing, right? So if all that's there, then that vulnerability is more accessible to us because we believe that there are some solutions. My life has become unmanageable and I need help beyond, right? One of the first steps in, in AA. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm unmanageable for some reason. I don't, I don't have this. I need help. That you could say I need help versus uh, to admit that's a weakness. Yeah. But when we're weak, he's strong. It makes all the difference to have the Lord, the Trinity at the center of your life. Letting, you know, the persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, as yeah. Dr. Hogan was, was talking yeah. about, St. Charles Borromeo talks about remembering uh, for whom you're talking to yeah. when mm -hmm. we're praying. We're praying mm -hmm. the office, we're praying the Psalms. Who are you speaking to? Are you just mm -hmm. saying the words like mm -hmm. glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit? But re remembering the persons of yes. the Trinity, yeah. you know, one God, three divine persons, Amen. unity. And, and, and none of us understands that. Totally, but he said, lean into it anyway. Yeah, lean into exactly. it exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Father, close us in a prayer with a blessing, please. Sure. 
Amen. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you, and may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God be upon you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Uh, thank you for joining us today. All together we will build a new culture of life and marriage and the family, and God will raise up the vocations in the church. So God bless you and all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.